Hello friends, uh, I'm back and I'll try to do more videos over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I was kind of exhausted after doing a lot of studio blog interviews and now I'm back with this video from Berlin. I moved to Berlin in September 2019 and I haven't done a single Berlin video yet. So welcome to my favorite gym here in Berlin, Bola Club. Thank you for letting me film and record this episode because I spent a nice day with my two good friends, Lucas and AK, who are such amazing setters. So I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoy this time I can spend with those guys. Thank you. Also Rob, thank you for letting me film at your gym and do whatever I want most of the times. Berlin is awesome. We have many, many great gyms. Hopefully I will cover more gyms over the next couple of months. For you all out there, stay safe, stay parkour, keep climb, and uh, yeah, see you soon at the gym. This is just a nerdy episode about a root setting day. I'm pretty happy that I was able to have two English native speakers who were able to show me what their root setting schedule looks like. If you're interested in more normal root setting days, you can find more here somewhere. I did another one from when I was staying in Melbourne. Anyway, let's get into it. Nikki, bye. This boulder. Um, well, we're trying to, right now with this guy, just taking up a little more. <laughs> Too much real estate. <laughs> Suck. <laughs> we'll put this up there. <laughs> that way we can, it actually might give us the depth we need to make this move work and then also free up a lot of space and clean up the wall so that... And you started this boulder setting today or yesterday? Yesterday, I mean we didn't really get far, we put one hole. <laughs> but the, uh, we threw these volumes up and the idea is, well the idea is there and we'll see where it gets to. Um, well, I'm trying to see if we can go from this palm and this kind of Gaston flaggy thing to have to bump the palm to the next volume. But, um, yeah. Position of the volume, position of the hold, maybe it's, maybe it's pretty good now, but... <laughs> the real trick is, is gonna be trying to get it, to find the start position. So you so you're doing the actual move first and then you go backwards or how the do move you move first? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just we're trying to figure out what what is the volume saying to us? <laughs> <laughs> it says right now palm palm or hopefully. And then so in order to make that move, we're gonna have to throw this volume up here and get this this movement going and then build a start into it, build an outro out of it mm. but the move is what's essential I guess so maybe a bit further left mm. so how, do, how possible does it feel right now it's all wrong <laughs> <laughs> it's in the right direction but uh, it seems like it's going to have to go way further left in order to throw you into the next palm. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I'll just start with that. Hot. So what's this? I just throw it in there just to see if it um, lends itself to some to a different beta. I also just need to see if I can get this. What what could the different beta beta mean? Like what what? Ah, well, instead of having like s starting in kind of a uh, like tension, like springing out of the start position. Maybe making the spring a little less aggressive, or maybe we keep it and then as you spring you do a, a toe hook catch instead of doing 
So right now I'm like not warm enough to be throwing myself at that bomb. So I'm just putting possibilities in there maybe that I can just climb in as well. Are you restricted by any difficulties right now or can you do whatever you want? <laughs> um, this is gonna be at least up into the gray, gray difficulty, gray or black. In general, it's like the last two difficulties of our of our parkour, so it's quite it's it's in the upper end of difficulty. Pretty com it could be complex, pretty powerful, technical, like beyond the red is like kind of our middle level yeah. where so just beyond middle this is going to be quite aggressive maybe it pushes into the black but we had an idea or lucas had an idea for a for a different boulder coming through these mm. that'll be black mm -hmm. beyond middle is good beyond mediums it's like it beyond medium <laughs> yes i like that great <laughs> Are you long. testing all on your own? Or? Uh, the way we do it is setters are sort of for themselves for the first half of the day. Mm -hmm. We set our boulders, try and be happy with them, and um, then we all test together. Mm -hmm. About two or three we start testing together. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the most important part of the day, yeah. to be honest. But how much time do you spend testing and how much time do you spend setting? Yeah, so like from nine, like on a normal day, yeah. um, from like nine till two is, or three, depending mm -hmm. on the wall, is setting. And then that's a certain number of hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then we set in like from three or two till six. Mm -hmm. We try and be done by five. Mm -hmm. Um, testing. Yeah. How heavy are you like about the ratio of testing to setting? I'm, I'm alright with it. Mm. I used to struggle to get done on time. Mm. But I think if you're efficient, and normally we split, like today there's three of us, so we'll test together. But we normally split the group into two. If there's four of us, we're testing mm. two groups of two. So that, um, yeah, save energy, skin, and time. <laughs> I wonder if we can in incorporate both moves or have one and lose the other. Like the Toho catch will definitely be, be nice. But then if to jump out of the Toho catch into a palm. Or just... Jump through a bad hold that you have to catch the Toho with. Yeah. And then bump out of that. Bump out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Just have to make sure you can't get your leg up out yeah, of the yeah. toe catch. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What the Just jump. Jump stuff to the toe catch. Ah, okay, so not actually starting in the roof with a foot and, a, and a, an additional start. Yeah, I think that's going to be really hard. So just jump into it. Yeah, yeah. Just jump into it. That makes things a lot simpler. I mean, otherwise you need a bigger pickup to like... You need another volume to like initiate the... This hold will be way too good to jump. We need a bad hold to jump into the catch that we can bump out again further. It's gonna be one of those moves that's gonna be a little bit size dependent and that something root setters don't like talking about but yeah. it just happens. <laughs> like, it's okay, it just, it's gonna be a little bit size dependent. As long as you know, you just gotta compensate for that in other boulders, I think. So how do you organize like your set? Like how do you make sure that, that you got all the grace? Um, this list. <laughs> so our, our boulders are like ordered in color difficulties and like groups of color. Mm. So like green is the easiest, yellow is second easiest and so on and so forth. We've got six of them. And so we, we write down how many we want of each. And also like a little indicator of roughly how hard it is in the parkour. So the idea behind that is that there's some leniency for us. Uh. Um, 
so that we can put quality and integrity of movement before like absolute grade specificity and so that hopefully the parkours like flow into each other a little bit yeah whether it works is up for discussion <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do you think how does it work like like in your gym here um well we're known for setting a little bit hard which is something we're trying to get a handle on now <laughs> um Customers still come, <laughs> which is good. Um, I don't know. What I do think works really as well is I think we have a good like progression and, and mix um, between the parkours. I think that works quite well. There's not too many big jumps. Like if you can s climb all of the reds, you're gonna find like three or four greys, which is the parkour one half. You know one more so you're never like stuck in one category so that like allows movement for the climbers and also keeps them like yeah hopefully the feeling that they're like have more progression in their climbing mm. yeah. that was like way back here I need something more near like the mm -hmm. yeah yeah, bro. Oh, I'm yeah. Ooh. Oh. That was good. I think with shoes, it's another story as well. It was like just you were there. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> just try it with shoes and warmed up. <laughs> What do you mean? Yeah, like you, you did like a two two minute uh, group testing, and now. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we go back to being on our own. Yeah, yeah. See? It's just a little check in with each other. Uh huh. Get some references. Quick pack attack. Back to Lone Wolf. Yeah. Just an idea. We we're wondering about bumping out of this again. Mm -hmm. But it, it seems like I would be able to get my foot up here. And if you're smaller than me, you could also do that. The theme of this boulder is like crimps, the unsung hero, <laughs> modern climbing, really neglected the crimpy head wall. I'm gonna build you like a, a sexy sort of double clutch move just to get people interested yeah. and then it's gonna go deep into crimpness <laughs> and I'm gonna make you pull really hard on small edges. Yeah, and what about the change of uh, characters in this boulder, like first a double clutch and then into crimping? Yeah, I like that. Is I it? like it when um, when a boulder asks for more than one skill set. Yeah. I think that's important. And could it be misleading? Like people expect something really funky and then they... I don't want people to feel safe in my boulders. That's <laughs> not what I'm going for. <laughs> I'm not a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. I think people are quite used to that in this gym at least. I don't know how other gyms do it. I've, I've talked to setters who are like, yeah, this boulder's gonna be this thing, and we sometimes we do that, like with this, it's like adventure time, pushy, yellow, chill, we don't want to surprise the beginners, but this is a gray boulder. We can like ask for people to have more than one skill set, to be able to like change paces mid-boulder. Um, yeah. 
So, I think Boulder Club, we have, we're not shy, well, we like setting like an old school style mm. that's not too common, which involves a lot of like raw power. And um, I think that's stand. Oh, that's different to a lot of other gyms. Yeah, what? But why would you say like raw power is old school? Like, is it just raw power, or do you still need? Is it just pure power, like not thinking, or? Well, I hope I hope not. No. <laughs> um, but maybe moves where you do need power. Mm. Definitely not all the boulders. Like I, I want this style of boulder in every parkour, yeah. where it's where it's movement based. Mm. But I also think climbing does involve power. Mm. It, you know, which I think a lot of modern setters are also shy to set. Mm. It's not so fashionable. Like okay, let's just grab this thing and pull really hard on it. Mm. Um, I don't know. I think maybe that's. Um, Something that f people notice, because mm. I mean, a raw power boulder is like unforgiving. Either you have the power mm. or you don't. Like, and that's why it doesn't get set so much. Maybe because it, you know, that's pretty in your face mm. and can be quite disappointing for people. Um, But it sounds like you're setting more power than technical. I don't like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, But I mean, what is technique? That's also like a term that I kind of hate because technique for me just means using, you're always carrying the same weight up a boulder, right? Uh. It's always your body weight. Mm -hmm. And it, technique for me is just putting your weight on the most efficient muscles. Normally that means your legs. So we try and set that as well. And uh, yeah, I don't know. You said just hand holes, like, or where are your foot holes right now? They're not on the boulder yet. <laughs> It depends on the boulder again. Um, yeah. I guess normally for me as a setter, it's easier to set the hand holds and then see where I want to put the foot holds. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think of an example of when I put footholds first. Maybe a boulder where there's only footholds. <laughs> Something balancy on a slab. Although that's not true, like if I'm, I'm try, trying to set a boulder that's really to do with like standing on bad frictious footholds or I want to force like a crossover move with the legs then I'll then I'll put the footholds on. Yeah. This boulder is kind of like I guess the main movements are like happening in the upper body for sure. Mm. This thing is is the catch for the double clutch, but what I'm hoping to happen uh -huh. is it for it to be also like a hook later. Mm. You've really got to pull your hip over in order to arrive slowly enough mm. um, and with the right direction. Those holds. Okay. So I mean that is a foothold. It's an essential foothold. <laughs> One foothold. <in. laughs> I think sometimes boulder club comes across as powerful Because we quite like demanding techniques that if you don't nail them, stuff feels really powerful. Mm. Like, simple things like standing on bad footholds. Mm. Like, if you're good at standing, you can take a lot of weight off your upper body. Mm. If you're not, you're gonna feel like you're pulling really, really hard. Mm. And also like, hip positions. It's like, damn, that sloper feels really bad until you find out that your hip just needs to be a little further left. Mm. So, yeah, you can thug your way through it. You know, as always, you're strong <laughs> enough. But there's hopefully an easier way. It feels nicer. Yeah. yeah. How do you at your feet now? Like, how do you know where they belong to? Um. <laughs> well, it's according to the sequence that I'm trying to create. So I know that in order to get into this uncomfortable ass position, mm -hmm. I'm going to want something directly underneath me, and then. I'm gonna want to pull over mm -hmm. because I want the double clutch. I don't want something I can just like shoulder off. Mm -hmm. That's why I've turned this foot like that. Mm -hmm. So that as you hit the side pull, it's gonna be pulling you in that direction, mm -hmm. which will in turn lead you to want to like slap that. Mm -hmm. That's the idea at least. And also like 
as your body's going that way, you'll be able to put weight on this mm. better. Um, and then I'm just gonna put some feet here. So you can gain the height to get a heel in. Do that sequence with the hip. Uh. And then I wanna have, maybe like, keep the feet quite narrow, mm. so that you have to hold some tension when you release that heel. And then, I think the top theme is gonna be narrow. Like I want to maybe then like, once you get this close side pull, I want you to like, have to turn your axis. Mm. Probably have a foot here and then maybe pull on this or maybe a foot over here. Mm. Yeah. But you know, I'm quite like, I need to look at it. I'm like, I do a lot of that and then moving it around. <laughs> so, yeah. I need that visual feedback and I need that testing later. I'm definitely like, I, for, no, wait, function over form kind of guy. Like things need to have like good reasons. Like, but this, this does upset me a little bit. Like I feel like there's not enough, like you've got two nose feet. Uh. And then this this thing, I couldn't find a third nose. You foot. know what I don't like so that they're like just plain horizontal and horizontal. Just from looking at it. All right, but they're not, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> this one's this one's turned slightly. Yeah, the first one. The first one and this one's also turned slightly, right? This one is not turned. Yeah. Yeah, because. <laughs> They're really bad holds, so I was thinking you're gonna need like a lot of weight on your feet. I hope they will turn a little bit, just a little bit. We'll see. Tilting. Often things look better after testing. Because yeah. they make sense then. <laughs> right now it's all very theoretical. <laughs> when it comes to setting and climbing styles, do you think your crew is pretty diverse? Or? Um, we try to be. We definitely <laughs> lean heavy on particular styles um, but I think that's alright I think that's got something to do with the fact that Berlin as a city has a lot of gyms so we developed our own style and we decided to run with that and try and do it pretty as well as we could um, you know other gyms are more known for more dynamic climbing perhaps or or whatever, we don't have an awful lot of that. But we don't have an issue that when someone wants to do dynamic climbing, they go to another gym. <laughs> like for that day, you know, yeah. it's nice if they visit us sometimes. <laughs> but just looking at your crew here, yeah. like, like how diverse are you three? Like, oh, you have like all the same climbing style and setting style or just looking at you three? Just us three, like yeah. the core crew. Um, I think, you could probably characterize us all somewhere in the old school range, but definitely different pockets of it. Like we definitely, we also enjoy different types of boulders. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Tricky question, man. Yeah. Would you would you say like the amount of toe hooks I see at Boulder Club is old school? <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, old school is maybe an overused word. <laughs> I guess when I use old school, I just mean anything that's like um, outdoor climbing related, <laughs> and you find toe hooks outside. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I you know I haven't been in the business that long, so I don't know if you guys were setting that many toe hooks ten years ago. I can't toe hook, so okay. <laughs> I think we love toe hooks because they're just comfy. <laughs> I don't know, it's just something that, because they're comfy. They're like, they're comfier than heel hooks, most of the time. I think so. I think they're easier on the knee, at least. Yeah. Like for me, I have a hard time cranking onto my knee like that. But it, toe, you get your leg fully extended in. You gotta watch out as a setter not to set what feels good to your own body, because uh. that's not everyone's body, but shit happens that definitely happens so <laughs> um yeah it's good to have you nikki to point that out to us uh, <laughs> yeah. Go on. Yes. i didn't get far enough left Come on, man. Oh! Oh! Come on. 
No, oh, it's nice. really nice if you stand up for real. Embrace the grossness, dude. <laughs> hey, that looks very uncomfortable. <laughs> we'll have to try. So how's your boulder so far? This boulder? Yeah. I think the clutch is very smooth and intuitive. The top looks quite uncomfortable. We might have to turn that hold or make it more in cut so you can get yeah. some purchase. Was it, on uh, was it on purpose, like uncomfortable at the top or is it just too? Though it, it should be a little bit gross. It should hurt a tiny bit. Like those crimps, that's what they're about, man. Oh, it's a bit much. Oh. A little more in cut. A little more in cut so you can turn that corner. Yeah. Right? So what's in happening? Cut, but still hideous. Okay. It's important. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's maybe... Is it too gross? Yes. <laughs> right, I'm gonna open it like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. A tiny, tiny bit. I'll try it. Okay, how are you doing now? Come on. Come on. Oh. I like that. <laughs> I really like pulling down on small things and feeling a little insecure. <laughs> like on my feet. So it's it's nice. So either we make the crimp better. Or give her a thumb. The one that you're falling into? Yeah, that. Ah. Or we turn it a little bit more. I think we're gonna turn it a tiny bit. Okay. And you open something up here? Yeah, it's, it's like minimally better. Finish it off, bro. It's even more heinous than I wanted it to be. <laughs> so, <laughs> some people will get a kick out of that, but I think it's genuinely too hard right now. So I think I'm gonna put a thumb on this hold to help you move over that corner. Okay. Yeah, it fits into the theme, I suppose. Yeah, why not in a left hand unknuckling? Because I don't want, I want you to have to move to the left with your hip rather than move to the left with a hand. So this will help you generate that movement and give a bit more confidence, but it's still gonna be a hip movement. Yes, it's gonna make it easier, I hope, to get your hip over it. I can't open my hand for the pinch. It's about standing up. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> but it's still too hard. So I think what would make it easier now, final tweak I think, I hope, is bringing that foot I put my right foot on, uh, down a tiny bit, and turning it a bit more. <laughs> so that... Uh, o only the foot? Just the foot. Uh. The hold feels cool. So AK just messed up with his hand. Yeah. <laughs> He's got weird skills. <laughs> 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 
They used to call him the snake because he could always do these like what seemed to be like impossible crosses and like rolling inside. Weird stuff. <laughs> this foot low. Maybe. I'm opening this a tiny bit more. Dude, it's it's too bad. It's still really bad. It's so bad, Come on, man. You can pull on it now. You can pull on it a bit more. Yeah. I think it's still necessary to rock over the hip, but you can do a bit more with your right arm. Yeah, yeah what about the ground up SM? Do you think it's necessary to climb every boulder ground up? Um, depends on the grade. Um, not really, it's just an indication of how hard it is. And I think, um, no, it's definitely not necessary. Like if, I'm, if we're testing, the black boulders, which are our hardest parkour, like there's people that are stronger than me that climb here, uh. so I shouldn't be able to ground a center every session, especially after doing all the other boulders. Uh. Um, it depends. I mean, a grey boulder I normally ground up, uh. and because um, if I don't, if I can't ground up it, it's not a grey boulder to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, no. You've got to test the moves and have a good idea for how the moves together are going to feel eventually. Mm -hmm. For yeah. people who haven't been here, can you put a number on your grey grading circuit? On your grey circuit? It's, just? it's like 6B, probably like 6B plus at the very bottom, uh, all the way up to 7A with the odd 7A plus sneaking in there. That's Re it. Real Fontainebleau? Pretty real Fontainebleau, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay. That's the core idea of the start. Uh. Seems to work. Looks like you do need to catch that toe hook to start. Uh. So we'll try again. It's definitely deeper, a little lower, but further up. Yes. Oh, I'm like here, huh? Yeah, you need to go. I feel like it, if I, before I had it turned and pulled in a little bit, but then it's not exactly the right angle to catch. We're also not amazing at this style. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe a few extra attempts on this is actually appropriate. Yeah. Yes! I lost the toe, but that works. But unfortunately, it looks the idea would be then from there to do an additional either an additional move with your right hand and having to catch yourself with the bump or maybe the other way around but now I can get my foot up stand up straight mm. take that as an underclean it is sad it's not horrendous it's still cool I think the hold would have to be much lower but it looks like that was so chill for you to get your foot up that even if we put it on the corner here, you'd still get your foot up. We could try swapping places with the grey one there. Okay. See if that makes it harder. Yeah, yeah. Let's try it. 
we're, we're trying to make this um, this box between your left palm and your right hand smaller so that it's more challenging to get your mm -hmm. left foot up. Maybe it works, but the that's also going to increase the distance between the toe and the hand, unfortunately. Yeah, it's also further left. The door's gonna be even more extreme. Should we turn this straight away as well to make yeah. it more tempting? <laughs> I can't see us reconfiguring that. I think just the way it's set up, like the way the volumes are set up, it's gonna be like really hard. I don't know if there's enough return on the effort. Because <laughs> it's still cool this way. So you've got to balance out how much effort am I going to put in and like, and whether it's going to make it that much better. Like it's but setting this way that you fix the volumes in place with the easy bowlers, yeah. and then you come back later and you test the harder bowlers at the end of the day when you can't move the volumes anymore. Do you run into these kind of problems like more often or? Yeah, this happens. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, that definitely, is the reason we can't move the volumes now because the other boulders are going over them. That volume perhaps could move. Um, but for us, I mean, the priority is definitely on the easier boulders anyway. Mm. And I don't mind having to encounter this kind of, like just having to change your plan. Mm. I'm not one of those setters, I don't have to force the move I envisioned. Mm. I like to react to what's happening, you know. Could bring this down and left. The hold or the volume? The volume. If it comes down and left, and that goes further left as well, could work. It's not going to affect the other boulders terribly. No. no. It might even, even if it comes down and left, this thing can just. Yeah. That's an easy tweak. Oi! Oh, I'm scared! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's far left enough now that putting your foot up doesn't really help you an awful lot. You definitely have to go further. Um, but that hold, I think, is not it. I think we need something like this hold that's gonna, like, not just take you left, but also take you in. So you get that. That jam. Like that I volume. said, you need to jib it. No, Nikki. <laughs> Germany, not France. <laughs> Can you? So, I'm a little bit scared. That's <laughs> that was one of the main issues. Um, I'm not used to doing things really fast. Mm. I also feel like I want something. So the idea is to go with your right hand again. I want something maybe for my right foot to generate that movement. And you, and you cannot bump with your left hand first, with the toe still in, and then release toe and right hand? No. I'm, it's too far away for me to generate enough tension on it. Uh. Do the foot first. Just think of the foot. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that move just looks if it, I think um, crazy as fuck. I think the board would be better because the board's not as big. It's gonna be closer. Yeah. I think I was wrong. We shouldn't orientate it down like that. We should orientate it up a bit so you have so you can hold it a bit longer and have time to do the push. Help! <laughs> All sorts of things wrong with that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, I could reach it through sheer reach, yeah. and I almost lost my face, I think. <laughs> Um, I also think I could probably get my foot up there. Yeah. 
and then just stand up into the left fold. Seems beyond gray. Beyond gray. Yeah, which isn't a problem, that's not an issue. Yeah. My issue is there's like so many like size limitation factors. I think what I try one more time is that holds a little further away and like like way better. Like I could give it I don't know degrees. Way better, yeah. <laughs> Turn it so you're like this. So you're hitting it and So we're just gonna try and like slow the move down because it feels really aggressive and in your face right now, a bit scary. I was thinking if you can like pull with your foot a bit longer. So you it'd be optimal would be you can hit the hold, control when you start turning and then you bump. At the moment I think you'd have to like do both at the same time and it just feels too aggressive. So maybe a bigger foothold. I think it needs to be more income. I took the toe out. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, you didn't see? No. I was able to perch on this foot hard enough that I took the toe out and kept it. I mean, let's give it two more tries each, and then we have to look for other solutions. I think. I don't feel like I can take my toe out, which isn't necessarily a problem. Um. <laughs> We're trying to weigh up if it's worth it or not to carry along this path. Because <laughs> it needs work. I have a couple of ideas how we could make it mildly different but still keep the essence, hopefully. Um. You want to carry on? Do a few more tries? Yeah, I mean, I feel like on. either we could move the volume in closer. I mean, we're both missing it by like that much. So we can move it in like that much. Or we could make this more in cut. So I feel like if I had more control of this, I could bring my foot up and bump. If it was this, it was better. I had more like leverage on it. I could just bump straight away to here. Happened. Yeah, I get it now. I understand more. Yeah, but the volume where it is right now, what happens if you move it just lower and lower? Like, will it destroy the move? Or? We could move it lower and lower. I don't see an instant problem with it. Um, other than you can reach it from the tow hook. Ah. Some big guy's gonna be able to hold it. Like I said, this is just like a size limited boulder. Mm. It's just one of those. <laughs> I think, actually, to be honest, I like setting for smaller people more. Yeah, I think I, I quite like a bunchy style. I don't think we set for longer people, really. Well, we. That's not true. Oh, we try to to mitigate that argument from people so we don't have to, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, actually I couldn't reach much further out of the tow hook. We could definitely bring it lower. Like... <laughs> it's like so powerful. Oh, it is so powerful, Nikki. <laughs> yeah, as soon as, and there's a lot on my right hand, as soon as I let that go, my whole body explodes off the wall. So, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily bad. It's just hard. It's not grey, any. It's definitely not grey. So cool, come on. No! I missed it. No! You ready? Go. That 
that was good because <laughs> that was proper rude. teamwork right that was proper teamwork yeah, yeah teamwork but you can pull hard on that hold i'm yeah. scared to go for it the whole time yeah. so that was reassuring it feels really good. you feel like a badass when you do the move <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and before i knew you were doing a double clutch over here i was <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Aiming for a double clutch? Or sloper bump to the crimp, come into the sloper. I didn't expect you to match that, but you did. Yeah, let's do it with the double clutch, because that's already on the wall. Okay. And perhaps. Got any ideas? <laughs> no. I think we could probably, if it's black, you can probably pull out all the way to that shoulder. Uh, you can shoulder all the way out to that side pull, and then maybe cross over, and then just have like sort of a layback situation where you're holding tension on the volume, and then pop to the top. It doesn't have to be a fierce ending because the moves that move so yeah, it's a move holder for sure. <laughs> That was pretty good. Awesome. Felt cool. Felt cool. really awesome. Yeah, I'd like to see this from a different angle. <laughs> All right. The key was depth thinking. The volume, it meant I could like get more with my right foot to slow the movement down. And it wasn't scary and aggressive anymore. Or well, as scary and aggressive. <laughs> Oh yes! Come on! Come on! The left hand was it too low? Or? Yeah, you didn't. It was like left hand. I think your left hand was here. Oh, did you, did you I didn't get too much higher. No, because mm -hmm. I found this try before that. I felt like the more cramped I got up here, mm -hmm. the harder it was for me to release my foot. If I could like really flag I could get the toe out but I just need to readjust to the feeling Warhammer Henderson because he's built like a fucking Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was a long episode. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. You can find many more videos somewhere here. You can try to support me on Patreon, but I'm really not reliable when I and how many videos I post. But I am thankful for every support because then I can buy more beautiful cups for my girlfriend and for my flat. Nikki out, love you, stay climb, keep her cool, stay safe and uh, let me know what you think, what you want to do, what you want to see. Uh, bye.